Hello booktube, Sarah here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm coming to you with a weekly reads video for November the 25th, 2017. Um, I'm going to be talking about all the books that I finished this week, there were five of them, and the books that I am currently reading. But uh, before we get started, let's talk about the tea that I am drinking as I like to do. So this is living, I think I've shown you guys this mug before, but it says, all my children have paws, <laughs> which I think is just adorable. I found this at Walmart in case anyone is interested. And the tea I'm drinking, again, I'm working my way through my David's Tea calendar from last year, the last few that I have, um, that I didn't completely finish off. Um, this is a caramel cream rooibos, and it's not bad. Um, I could have let it steep a little bit longer because it's not super strong, but it's got a really nice mellow taste to it, um, and I really, really do like it. So, yeah, that's yummy. And as you guys can see, we have fested it up the house. Um, the Christmas tree is up, the lights are around the window, which you guys obviously can't see. Up here, I'll show you really quickly, I have my David's Tea calendar for this year, and over whoop, the, there, and I have a cat crying, sorry about that. Right here, that little mug thing, that is um, from Sensi. If you guys are familiar with that company, they do um, the, max, the wax melts. So you put it in and you turn it on, and um, you put the wax melt in it, and it... Um, sense up the room. I love candles. I am a huge fan of candles. Unfortunately, we can no longer burn candles in our apartment because of Goran. Um, because my cat, I don't know if you guys know this, I've mentioned it before, my cat's actually asthmatic. Um, I have to give him a puffer once a day. Yes. It's it, it's a lot easier than it sounds, <laughs> let's put it that way. But um, yeah, so I have to give him his puffer and um, because of that, the asthma, we can't burn candles. But these are okay because it's the smoke, not the scent, that bothers him. So, yeah, so I've got that up there, too. And my little peep, do you see my peep right there? This is a peep. You guys, I love peeps. I'm addicted to them. A friend sent me this, but I thought it was kind of festive looking, so I've got it up there. But, yeah, so I've kind of got a little couple things up there, and, you know, we're decorating up for the holidays. The tree currently has no ornaments on it. Um, we have to find that box. It's in our storage room, and it's labeled Christmas, but we haven't been able to find it yet. It's probably buried under about 20 other boxes in there. We really need to get in there and clean that out because it is a horror show. Anyway, that's not why you guys are here. You guys are here to listen to what books I read this week. So let's jump right in and get started. Um, again, I am mentioning these or talking about these in the order that I read them in. So the first book that I finished this week was The Strawberry Hearts Diner by Carolyn Brown. Uh, this was narrated on audio by Brittany Presley. Um, I gave it three stars. It has an average rating of 3.99 stars on Goodreads. And I actually got three challenges completed out of this book. So the first one was for the Triple RC Challenge um, for November. And it was their Black Friday um, category, category number eight, which was, I think, read a book that was relatively inexpensive. And I bought this book on ebook for like 99 cents. It was on sale on Amazon. And then because it was on sale there, I, of course, got the audiobook at a reduced price, which was actually only $1.99. Um, the second challenge I got was the Candyland Quarterly Challenge, and it was for task number 27, which was, uh, the first Candyland board game sold for a dollar. Read a book that you thought was a great deal. On sale, you borrowed it, and again, I got it on sale. And the third one was for the A Million More Pages Challenge, the, um, for the A Million More Pages group, the KMMP Challenge, which is like a radio station. I've mentioned this before, that every week it's a different genre of music. And they list a bunch of songs with um, um, prompts that go with the song. So the song that I got, it was this was for week number two, which was Rap. And um, the song was I Need Love by LL Cool J. And you had to read a book with a character who falls in love. Well, this is a romance novel, so obviously it fit the bill. I said this before, I think. Three stars is a good rating for me. I enjoyed the book. It didn't blow me away, but I enjoyed it. My issue with this book, and I'm a big fan of Carolyn Brown, any, all the books that I've read by her, and I've read about two or three books by her, I have thoroughly enjoyed. This one fell flat for me. Um, I found it was actually boring. Like, there wasn't enough conflict in the story, and I felt that it needed more. There were a lot of different storylines going on. There was the main character, uh, Jancy, and her relationship with um, a local guy in town named Shane. There was... Um, Vicky, who's another character in the story, um, her daughter, who's in her 20s, her relationship with the town bad boy, Ryder, and there's this con man who has come to this town. He's trying to buy up all the property in town so he can turn the whole town into some sort of development. So you'd think with all those things going on 
that there would be a lot of conflict, but there wasn't, and that kind of drove me crazy. So the whole premise of the story is, is that Jancy um, has had a really tough time. She's in her very early 20s. Um, I would almost classify her age to be in the new adult category if you were going to categorize that part of it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And um, she's kind of had this hard time, and she's leaving to go stay with her cousin in Louisiana. And she's driving through her old hometown of Pick, Texas, which is like a very, very tiny little town in Texas. And her car breaks down in the parking lot of the Strawberry Hearts Diner and catches on fire. And it just so happens that they need a waitress, so you know the way these things go. She ends up working in town, and then the relationship starts up with Shane, and she befriends Emily, and Vicky works. Vicky um, is part owner of the diner, and you know all these things happen. And like I said, it's like there there should be all this conflict. And like one of the things is is Jancy's past, and she doesn't want Shane to find out about her past, and she frets about it through like three quarters of the book, and then with, when she finally tells him, he's like, yeah, I already knew that. So it's like there wasn't even. Do you know what I mean? It just felt like it was missing something. It was a good story. I enjoyed it. I liked the characters. The narration was fantastic. And it was a really, really sweet story. It just, it felt like it was missing something for me. That's the easiest way for me to be able to explain it. Um, the next book that I finished was Thanksgiving Protector by Sharon Dunn. Um, I gave this book three stars as well. It has an average rating on Goodreads of 3.97 stars. This is the first book in the Texas Ranger Holidays series. I think there's three books in the series. And it is um, love inspired, it's a love inspired suspense novel and it's number 635 in that category of books. Um, I got three challenges out of this one as well. The first one was the, um, I read this for the Harlequin Romance Monthly Theme Reading Club for November 2017, which is a Facebook group, which I have a link in the description box below. Excuse me, sorry. I also got this for um, a Candyland Quarterly Challenge. It was for task number 22 which was Candyland. The Great Lollipop Adventure is a 2005 animated direct-to-DVD film based on the board game. In the film, the evil Lord Licorice starts to take over Candyland, assisted by his bites, uh, changing it from a brightly colored happy kingdom to a somber, drab-hued place. Read a dystopian or an apocalyptic story or a book with a character who likes power or being in charge. This book fit the category. And I also got this for the Anti-Stress Holiday Challenge that I am doing in the Triple RC group, which is literally just read any books that take place that have a holiday mention in them. And this was my second one, and this one was Thanksgiving, of course, takes place. <sighs> Sorry. Um, I've been doing a lot of talking because I just recorded my other podcast. Um, I enjoyed this story. Again, three stars is not a bad rating from me. There were a few things in this story, though, that I found questionable. So the whole basis of the story is, is that Kylie is a Border Patrol um, person, and this is like on the border of Mexico into Texas. El Paso is in Texas, I think. Yes, I think it's Texas. And Austin is a Texas Ranger. And the two of them have been working closely together to stop this, like, mob boss kind of guy who's from Mexico, like a drug cartel, coming into the United States. Um, there was a woman that Kylie had befriended, and she had a small a six-month-old daughter. And she was kind of being an informant and telling about what these people were going to do when they're smuggling stuff over the border. Well, then, at the very, very beginning of this book, so it's not giving anything away, the woman is killed. And she leaves her six-month-old daughter, Mercedes, in Kylie's custody. So, for one, I don't know how believable that was, but we'll go with it. A, a lot of times, I think, when you're reading a lot of these kind of stories, is you've got to kind of take it with a grain of salt. Do you know what I mean? Um, and, you know, so that that is what it is. Well, now, somebody's after the baby, for whatever reason, which I don't want to give away too much of. And the thing that drove me crazy is that Kylie claims how much she loves this little girl and she's now her daughter and blah, 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 but yet refuses to put her in any kind of productive custody. Like, of course, it would have made the story much shorter because there would have been no real conflict of her running from the bad guys and whatever, but at least the kid would have been safe, you know what I mean? So, I don't know. I, I found her choices to be a little questionable and that kind of, that kind of bothered me. Um, there was a lot of action in this story, a lot of suspense in this story. Um, the romance aspect of it was kind of there throughout the whole thing, which was really nice. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I liked it. It was a good enough story. I enjoyed reading it. And if you like that kind of thing, I absolutely recommend it. Next book was my favorite book of the week. And one of my first five-star reads in probably the last couple months. I haven't had a five-star read in a little while, so oh, so happy about this one. 
So the next book is Somebody to, uh, Somebody to Love by Kristen Higgins. Um, I narr uh, this was narrated on audio by Exy Sands, who does a fabulous job every time. I gave it five stars. It has an average rating on Goodreads of 4.05 stars. It is the third and final book in the Gideon's Cove series. And I got three challenges out of this book as well. So the first one was for the Triple RC challenge for November of 2017. It was Reader's Choice Challenge number 10. Um, this That wasn't the book I plan on reading for Reader's Choice, but I am towards the end of the month and I still have a few more books that I have to get through. So I slotted that one in. I think going forward, other than December, because I've already picked a book for December, but like starting in 2018, is that I'm going to leave that free space, essentially, that Reader's Choice space open and slot something in there for a challenge if I need to going forward. Um, this was also for Pass the Parcel uh, Challenge Round 9, which was week, uh, for Week 11, which was the final week. Our team did not win. The team that won, um, what you had to do, like, everybody had to finish all the week's challenges, like every single challenge, in time. And then it was the final group to finish all their books um, like right away and it was team number six who won so congratulations to team number six but I did read this for week for challenge week 11 which was read a book from the list humorous romance novels and this was obviously on the list because Kristen Higgins does great romantic comedy um, and I also got this for another Kenny Land quarterly challenge this was for task number six which was Jolly um, he was removed in the 2010 version and then after widespread outcry and demand was brought back in the 2013 edition um, read a humorous book or a book with someone smiling on the cover. Obviously, this one fit the bill. I loved this book so much. If you guys have not read the Gideon's Cove series, I really do recommend reading it in order. Um, you don't have to. The stories don't actually really interconnect until this third book. Um, I was talking to my mom about this today, and she said Maeve Binchy is famous for doing this as well. So the first book in the series, if you will, is Catch of the Day, and that is the story of Maggie and Malone. And it takes place in this small little town in Maine called Gideon's Cove. And in that story, I read that one earlier this year, she falls in love with the local priest, and, you know, there's the brooding um, lobsterman of Malone, and of course it's their relationship, right? Um, the second book in the series is The Next Best Thing, which is Lucy and Ethan's story. And Lucy is a widow, um, and uh, she kind of begins a relationship with her deceased husband's brother. And that one was absolutely fabulous as well. That one takes place in another town, I think in Maine, if I remember correctly. Mansport um, is the name of that town. But this third book is Parker and James's story. Now Parker is Ethan's ex-girlfriend, um, but they have a child together. So in the next best thing, Parker is featured quite a bit because, you know, her and James had, or not James, her and Ethan had had this relationship and they have a uh, young boy named Nikki and, you know, all these things. And uh, Parker and Lucy are best friends. Um, so anyway, so you see Parker quite a bit in that second book. Coming into this third book is now Parker's story. And she's, um, she was a very, very wealthy young lady. Her father, um, you know, conglomerate on Wall Street. And she actually writes children's books called The Holy Rollers. And it's about these little angels who haven't gotten their angel wings yet, but uh, go around the earth on roller skates and, you know, help kids solve problems. And she hates these books. She did it as a joke and they ended up selling and she donates all the money that she makes for it because she's a very wealthy girl to um, a Save the Children's Fund. Well, then her father loses his entire fortune and her entire trust fund. So she's got nothing. The only thing that she's left now is this estranged aunt left her this house in Gideon's Cove. So off she goes to Gideon's Cove for the summer to fix this place up and resell it. James is her father's personal lawyer and she could never stand him. She jokingly calls him thing one and you know, it's their relationship. And oh my God, guys, I could go on and on and on about how great this book was for like the next half an hour. Again, I highly recommend you read them in order because Maggie and Malone, of course, come back into the picture. And, of course, Lucy and Ethan are, are in the story as well. And, you know, you fall in love with these characters so much. And then to see them all together, it's just wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, the writing is hysterical. Um, the characters are so well fished out and so well done. Um, the Holy Roller stories that I was telling you about at the beginning of the book, she has finished writing them. She, write it, she wrote the final book in the series. 
and um, her publisher has kind of been bugging her for her next kind of for her next book. Um, but all throughout the entire story, these holy rollers are talking to her in her head, and it, it's hysterical. Like they have these like little snide comments and stuff like that about what she's doing, and she talks back to them and tells them to shut up and stuff like that. And it's it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. And on audio, these books are just fabulous. I listened to all three of them on audio, and I cannot recommend them enough. So please, please go check these out. And unfortunately, going from a five-star book down to a two-and-a-half-star book. Um, the next one is Cowgirl Makes Three by Bern Myrna McKenzie. Again, I gave it 2.5 stars. has an average rating on Goodreads of 3.83 stars. And it is a Harlequin romance novel under the romance um, imprint. And it is book number 4,197. So yes, this is the original Harlequin series that started everything, essentially. Um, I got one challenge for this one, and um, this was for the Connections Challenge, which is the entire reason I read this book. Um, so running from October 1st uh, of this year, of 2017, to November 30th of 2018 is the Connections Challenge, where each story needs to follow the story before it um, in some way. Either it has to match uh, a word in the title, or the author's name, or um, the year it was published. Um, so this one, um, Cowgirl Makes Three, followed the one before, which had the word cowgirl in the title as well. So that's how that went. This is my fourth connection in this challenge. Yeah, I, this story really fell flat for me, guys. So I've got cat fur, like, all over the place. Both cats are just kind of, like, laying right beside me right now. Um, <laughs> it's about a woman named Ivy, who used to be a very famous model. And she was married to a, like, big-time actor, and they had a little boy. And she comes from this very small town in Texas. Well... She was in a car accident that took the life of her husband and her son, and she's come back to town two years later to try and rebuild, because in the accident she was, um, she was scarred, and she can no longer be a model. And from the sounds of it, the scarring that she had was so minor, it was like, you know, a cut on her chin and something else, and I found it was very blown out of proportion, um, but she decides she's going to work on this ranch for this guy named Noah, because she used to be a, a rancher's daughter, and she said she can do all these things. And what really bothered me in the story was at the very beginning, is that Noah kept telling her no. He wasn't going to hire her, not because she was a woman or anything like that. He just didn't feel like she could do the job. She was this tiny little waif of a thing. And, you know, ranching is hard work. And she kept, just kept showing up and doing stuff. Like, who does that? You know, if you go to apply at McDonald's and they tell you, no, I'm sorry, you're not hired, you're not just going to show up and start making fries. Like, it doesn't make any sense. But of course, a relationship happens between her and Noah. He ends up hiring her. He has a young daughter, and she's afraid to be around the daughter because of her son. Not that she's afraid she's going to hurt the daughter, but it brings up too many painful memories, which I guess I can kind of understand. But I don't know. Again, there were just a lot of things that I found problematic with this story. It was cute. It was a cute, very quick little read. It was less than 200 pages. Um, it, it was kind of bordering on a clean romance. It wasn't 100% a clean romance. There were some adult content in it, but not a Jill Shalvis kind of content. Um, you know, very, very minor for what was actually there. So yeah, so there's that one. And then the very last book that I finished this week was Thanksgiving Dream by Courtney Hunt. Um, I gave this book three stars. It has an average rating on Goodreads of four stars and is the 11th book in the Cupid's Coffee Shop series. I will not have a lot to talk about. There were no challenges I got for this one because most challenges ask you to have the book being at least over 100 to 150 pages. Um, at minimum, this book was 33 pages. So it's a novella. Um, and it was super adorable. This story was actually about two high schoolers. And even though the story is called Thanksgiving Dream, the story itself actually revolves around Nan NaNoWriMo, uh, the National Novel Writing Month in, in November. And Alice, the girl, is a, um, a budding author. And uh, the boy, Kiernan, um, he has been given the task to write a novel in November by his English teacher in order to up his grade. And, you know, she kind of starts this writer's workshop and the two of them work together. It is a really, really sweet story. Um, the ending, it's more, it's not a, oh my gosh, we're so in love. Let's, you know, spend the rest of our lives together. They're teenagers. They're 16 or 17 years old. It ends with the two of them deciding to go on a date. I mean, it is so sugary sweet and adorable. And again, it's 33 pages long. I started reading it on Thursday in the morning and I finished it like I mean, I took a break. I was doing some knitting and some other things. And, you know, and then I got back to the story and I, I finished it. My husband goes, you finished it? And I'm like, it was 33 pages long, but totally adorable. 
I absolutely recommend this series. I love it so, so much. So what am I reading this week into next week? Um, first of all, my audiobook is Rescue My Heart by Jill Shalvis. Um, this is book number three in the Animal Magnetism series. I'm listening to this one on audio. It's being narrated, of course, by the wonderful Karen White. Um, I'm about halfway through this book now. I'm doing this one for another challenge, and I've actually changed one another one of my um, Triple RC challenges for the month um, because I think this one fits the category a bit better. Um, and yeah, so, so far I'm really enjoying it. This is Adam's story and, um, he is a tracker, um, like for people who are lost and missing in the forest and in the wilderness. And, um, I think it's Holly. It's gotta be Holly is the main character, the main female lead in this. And her father has gone missing. So he is helping her. And the whole beginning of this book has been the two of them in the wilderness, you know, and sparks also ensue and it takes place in winter time. So Yeah. So far, really, really enjoying it. Um, my current uh, ebook, if you will, is Nanny Makes Three by Joan Kilby. I've just started this one. I'm about 30% of the way through it. This actually takes place in Australia, which was a lot of fun. Um, and it's about a woman who is um, has been traveling for the last 10 months with the Cirque du Soleil. Um, her boyfriend was a uh, an acrobat, an acrobat, excuse me, and they ended up breaking up and blah blah blah. So she's back and she doesn't really have any job prospects or anything like that. And she finds this woman and her two children walking along the side of the road. And so she's wondering where they're going. And it turns out they're staying in this like abandoned like cottage on this guy's property. And, you know, one thing leads to another. She ends up working for the guy so she can help keep these people safe because they're coming from a very bad situation. And yeah, so far I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's not a bad book. It's keeping my interest. And what I really liked is like right from the beginning, the action started, which is always a great way to get me into reading the book. So, so far I'm liking it. And last but not least, my Babysitter's Club book is still Christine the Walking Disaster by Anna M. Martin. It's book number 20 in the series. I haven't really read very much of this one. I'm only about three or four chapters into it. Um, I've been really tired this week and not a lot of reading after work or um, before bed. So this will also be, excuse me, this will also be my last Babysitter's Club book of the year because um, once I'm done this one in December, I will be working on the um, challenge books for the read-along that I'm doing with Elizabeth from Lizzie Fay Loves Books, the Donna Vandelier books, uh, Christmas books. So that will be my bedtime reading. Um, and I'm going to try to make sure that I make, carve out some time instead of going to bed when I'm exhausted, you know, wait till I'm getting tired and then go to bed instead of waiting till I'm exhausted. <laughs> so yeah, so that is what I am reading this week. And quickly, I will show you what I'm going to be crafting this week because I'm not well I will be doing some knitting um, this weekend later on but right now what I plan on working the rest of this evening on is my cross stitch and I've gotten quite a bit done from last time I think I've showed you guys this before this is the through the stars zodiac cross stitch pattern it's by clouds factory I'll leave a link to it in the description box below if you guys are interested if you're cross stitchers or anything at all like that so it's kind of hard there's not much to see right now I actually had to move the pattern down so if you look underneath there's the moons and stuff that I had done before. So it's all the zodiac signs, and then these are all the constellations with how they play out. And now I'm working into inside this little um, circle here, they're gonna be little characters that represent each of the zodiac signs. So I'm very excited to get into doing that this evening, and I cannot wait to pick this back up. I had actually put this on the back burner for a few weeks because this was a big pain in the Patukas. Um, doing all these little individual little dots because you had to kind of really make sure of where you were placing the stitch and yeah so that was kind of a bit of a pain but it's done um, I only have nine more to go because there are 12 signs of the zodiac so this will go all the way around um, and then these will go all the way around you know what I'm saying um, do I have the ability hold on I will try and show you guys exactly what it looks like and the battery on this is dying Bernard, what are you doing? Sorry, my cat is trying to lay on my heating pad. My back has been killing me. I don't know what it is like up in here. I think it's from work, from the way my mouse sits on my keyboard. It's 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 really, really a pain, literally a pain. So I've been kind of sitting on a heating pad at night, and I've been trying not to do a lot of knitting and, and cross-stitch and stuff like that, but I can't just sit idle. It, it, it doesn't work. Oh, it's called Through the Stars Zodiac Sampler. So let me just turn down the brightness on this. Oh, it might be too much. Sorry, sorry. Bear with just a sec, guys. Hold on to your hats. Let's stop it. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. All right. So that is what the finished piece is going to look like. <laughs> 
I don't do things part way, but it is going to be gorgeous. Isn't that stunning? Oh, I just love it. Yeah. So that is that. That is what I'll be working on. But other than that, um, I wanted to, before I let you guys go, I'm going to include a picture, like before I do like the little end credits, if you will, of this, um, uh, that was taken last Sunday. Um, I didn't take the picture. My sister-in-law took the picture. I think I told you guys in my last one, um, when I record on Sunday, that um, I had been at church that morning. My nephew was having his dedication um, for my sister and brother, my brother and sister-in-law's church that they go to. And he looked so adorable in his little suit with his little tie and his little vest that he kept trying to eat. He's only five months old. Um, but I want to include this picture just before I let you guys go, like uh, before the credits. And it's of my grandmother, uh, who is 91 years old, and my nephew, who is five months old. And she is holding him. And it's just such a wonderful picture. And I just wanted to add as well that that lovely woman in that photograph just had a mastectomy two weeks ago. Um, at nine, at the age of 91, um, she had breast cancer in her seventies and it came back, um, and they decided to do a mastectomy and yeah, she was well enough to come to church to see her great grandson get his dedication. So again, I don't share a lot of personal, personal family stuff with you guys, but I just thought it was such a beautiful picture. I had to show it to you guys. So anyway, that is it. I will let you guys go and I will see you in my next, oh, before I get onto that, um, really, really quickly videos for next week. Vlogmas starts on Friday. Um, so because of that, I'm not posting any other videos this week. I'm going to kind of save my energy for doing Vlogmas in December. So um, I will be recording right after I'm done this one. I'll be recording my December TBR. Usually I do my TBR the end of the month before, but this TBR is actually going to go up on the 1st of December as my first day of Vlogmas. So stay tuned for that as well. Anyway, guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know in the comments below um, what you're reading this weekend, if you've read any of these books, what you thought about them, and let's just chat. And I will see you guys in my next video. Take care and happy reading, everybody. Bye.